One year on since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the war has greatly changed Europe. I'm in Vienna to talk to Ivan Krastev, political scientist and writer, about the consequences of Putin's aggression. Ivan Krastev, thanks very much for being with us on Euronews. Thank you for the invitation. How did the war change Europe? The most important way the war changed Europe is that basically forced Europe to see the world with different eyes. In a certain way, Europe was seeing its whole continent as a post-war. The idea that a major war is not possible in Europe anymore was at the basis of the way Europe is seeing itself and the world. And this is not true anymore. What does it mean in the reality and, and uh, in the geopolitics? When the war started, Europeans were pushed to revisit some of their major policies. One was that economic interdependence automatically means no war, that if you trade a lot with somebody, you are not never going to fight it. It turned out not to be true anymore. Secondly, Europeans, we have managed to convince ourselves that military power doesn't matter. And then we discovered that it doesn't matter when you don't have it. But otherwise, basically, it matters. And this changed everything from military budgets, from the way the economy works. So as you see, in a period of one year, we basically have a totally different military budgets. We're not getting uh, Russian gas and oil anymore. It's a, such a radical change. What we see now in Ukraine, is it a war of civilizations or a traditional war on territory? It is an identity war. Uh, and this is an identity war because it was declared like this. Don't forget that at the end of the day, the war started with the essay that President Putin penned himself uh, in the summer of 2021 when he said that Russians and Ukrainians are the same people. And he invaded Ukraine with the idea that the Russians and the Ukrainians are the same people. And Ukrainians resisting to tell him that Ukrainians and Russians are not the same people. And what do you think about Russia's argument that uh, Ukraine's Western orientation posed a danger for them? Russia could have a legitimate argument when it comes that it also has its security interest. Uh, it can argue basically where there should be military bases or not. But the problem was that what Russia was insisting was saying Ukraine does not have the right to be part of the West. And the problem is who is giving Russia the right to tell the Ukrainians? Uh, how they should basically define their own political identity. Russia is a powerful nuclear state. And Ukraine was a kind of a so small state for Russia's perspective, a state that basically decided to give up its nuclear weapons at the end of the Cold War. So to believe that Ukraine was a major threat uh, to Russia, it's slightly, let's put it, uh, overdone. How do you find the reaction from the side of the European Union to this war? When the war started, it was a shock. And I do believe it was exactly the shock of the war that nobody expected that pushed the European Union to do things which basically European leaders were not prepared to do just a week before it. So from this point of view, it was the shock, the war that also explains to a great extent uh, European unity in the first uh, weeks. It also explains why the European public, which otherwise so unprepared for this war, suddenly reacted in the way very different than at least uh, President Putin expected them to react. The European Union decided to, to finance weapons transports to Ukraine. They are accepting millions of Ukrainians. They are trying to isolate Russia in uh, economical terms. Is this the right way to go? To be honest, what was the options that uh, Europeans had? First of all, people are talking about escalation. Normally, you are not giving them weapons because you believe that if you're not going to do weapons, Russians are not going to escalate on their own. The level of destruction of Ukraine coming from the Russian bombing is on the level of 1941, 1942. So from this point of view, the questions that Europeans were facing is, should we be responsible for the Russian occupation of Ukraine? or we're going to give Ukrainians what they're asking from us. What people you're doing or not doing very much depends on how you see the battlefield. In the beginning of the war, very few Europeans believed that Ukraine can resist and that Ukraine can win. The moment when this changed, Europeans were much more ready to give to the Ukrainians weapons, which otherwise they were not ready to give. Talking about escalation, do you think it is ever possible that the NATO will join this fighting with soldiers, for example, on Ukraine's soil? I don't believe that 
both Western publics or Western leaders are ready to do this. And secondly, NATO joining the war means the war basically a World War III. And I do believe both on the Russian side and on the NATO side, it is a very clear idea that this is not going to work for anybody. And don't forget in their history, Americans and Russians have never been fighting directly each other. Let's talk about Central Europe. We have seen very strong responses from Poland, from Baltic countries, and other approach from Hungary. How this war is affecting the future of the Central European cooperation? First, this was a war which for many East Europeans, particularly for the Baltic and the Poles, became their own war. And there was um, uh, opinion polls, which I have been uh, uh, studying, which shows that the major difference between East and West is that East fears occupation. West fears nuclear war. But as a result of this war, basically, the Visegrad group does not exist anymore. Visegrad 4 became, to be honest, 2 plus 1 plus 1. On one side, you have basically Poland, for which this is about their own existential security. And you can see this is not just the position of the government. This is the opposition. This is the whole society. Basically, the position of the Hungarian government was not my circus, not my monkeys. We don't want to do anything with this. And while they supported most of the sanctions, at the end of the day, they made very clear that uh, they don't support uh, the common policy. How do you think the war could end? And when could it end? The wars end on the battlefield. And these days we know very much that the war very rarely end up with uh, a peace treaties. This is what we learned after the end of the Cold War, that most of them end basically with certain type of exhaustion and basically certain type of uh, negotiations that do not end with the peace treaty. From this point of view, I don't know when it's going to end and how it's going to end. But I know something very important that both on European side and on the American side, the problem is that the war should end in the way that we should not be afraid that it is going to start again in five or six or seven years in the way basically it ended and started again after the Russia's annexation of Crimea. The EU promised Ukraine a full membership do you think it is realistic or it was a mistake, this promise? Listen, it is not realistic, but many policies that happened in the last one year, if you were going to ask me a year ago, is this realistic? I was going to tell you it's not realistic. And the story is that European Union is already so much involved in Ukraine that to believe that the relations are going to be back to the way they were is also unrealistic. So we are going to have something new, and as a result of it, Ukraine is going to be different, and the European Union is going to be different. Ivan Krastev, thanks very much for the interview. Thank you.